We're going to continue on with the next lesson. This is number two on debugging. Now, debugging is one of the most time-consuming parts of programming. I find that I spend about 20% of my time writing the initial version of the code, and then debugging is uh, much more than that. Uh, finding those errors, whether syntax errors or logical errors, I'm just not getting the right result out of the program. So there are a couple strategies here for more effective programming. Instead of going through the text here, let me just go ahead and describe it. I've got the uh, debugging process I typically go through. Really, it starts much earlier, even before writing the program. What you want to do is maybe create a map for yourself. Okay, so you're going to start uh, with the end in mind. Here's the objective, and you're going to start uh, here. Now, let's think about the project that we're going to be doing later. Okay, so we want to be able to control the temperature of our chicken incubator. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to do a couple things with the program. First of all, we want to create, um, you know, the target value. And then we're going to read the temperature. And then we might do uh, something like adjust uh, the heater. And then continue doing that until it reaches the target value. And then we'll monitor that maybe even visualize the temperature on a plot. Okay, so all of these steps, we want to draw this map so that we see the big picture when we begin. And then what we do is we then take each one. So this might be target. And I need to ask the user for desired temperature. All right, and then maybe I need to convert that or verify uh, that it's a number. All right, so we can break down those individual bigger tasks into much simpler ones. This is called a pseudocode. Okay, so pseudocode is you're not actually writing anything, but you start with pseudocode that's a high-level outline of your program. All right, and this helps with debugging because then you realize what is the target or the objective of each of these sections. And then when you start to program, you can break that down and test that individual piece. But let's just talk about this in the context of MATLAB, okay, um, or Octave. And we want to just start fixing errors. Now, some of these are going to be syntax errors. Uh, so, for example, if I just run this one, right here. It gives me a syntax error, as I can see. And it says, uh, okay, it's missing. Okay, you, it says right here it has a parse error. And uh, I gave a hint here, but if you didn't have that hint, this is what the error would look like. Okay, it points, it points directly to the place where it thinks the error might be. And so that helps because then we just put in the extra quote. Okay, and then it completes successfully. Also, the next thing that we want to do is um, run this next one. Okay, target undefined near line one, column one. So sometimes it's just a little bit less obvious. In this case, we just didn't define the variable name correctly. We can't have any spaces in it. All right, and if we do something like start it with a letter one, then it's going to have an error as well, some syntax error. So you can't start a variable with a number. All right, but you can start it with an underscore. All right, so sometimes you also just want to look up, let me just go ahead and do this. Um, all right, so parse error, syntax error. And one of the things that helps quite a bit when you go online, okay, you can go like this, the different types of errors. Okay, find a parse error in Octave. Sometimes Stack Overflow is the best source for this. 
Okay, other people have had similar errors. You can look for an answer. You can even ask your own question on Stack Overflow. All right, so I just come back here. I'm going to fix a couple of these. Go ahead and work through these yourself as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try this. All right, so you have sometimes even warnings, implicit conversion from numeric to character. All right, so I've got current temperature, target temperature, and then I've got my difference. Now in MATLAB or Octave, if you put on the semicolon at the end, it's going to disappear. All right, it means don't display. And so one of the ways to uh, debug is to just take off that semicolon, or you could even put it on there and just print the things that you're interested in seeing. Okay, in this case, uh, warning implicit conversion from numeric to character. Let's just go look that one up as well. All right, how do I solve this warning? Okay, it looks like somebody else had that same question. They asked it on Stack Overflow. All right, and somebody says, okay, you've just got to convert it to maybe something like num to string. All right, let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to take this and I'm going to convert it to a string. And then I'm going to display it together. Okay, so there I have I've resolved that warning. 7 degrees Celsius is the difference. And you can see here I also had the hint of use num to string to make it a string. So really it isn't so much even resolving these syntax errors or these bugs, but it's just the skills that you need to go out and find that type of information. All right, um, and also the confidence to do it. That might be the most important thing. All right, now go ahead and connect your temperature control lab, and we're just going to run this code right here, and it's going to find the mode of three temperatures, TC1, TC2, and TC3. So I've created those values here in an array. We'll talk about arrays later, but I've just used the mode function in order to be able to calculate this. Okay, and so I clear all variables at the very beginning. That's a good way to debug as well as you can just clear all the variables, start fresh as if you had just started running Octave or MATLAB from the beginning. I'm connecting to the TC lab and then I read a couple temperatures and there you can see the mode calculation. But I got an error. TC3 undefined and it gives you the line number and column number. So the error here is just that we didn't define TC3. All right, so I'm going to just sample the temperature 1. All right, it's going to connect to the TC lab, and there you can see 26.75. If I come down as well after I've completed this, I can also look at TC1, okay? I can look at TC2, all right, and TC3. Okay, so sometimes you even create an extra code segment that you're going to delete later just to be able to investigate uh, variables. And um, you can also step through code as well. Okay, you can run, set breakpoints, interrupt the kernel, and step through it and watch those variables change. All right, so that's it on debugging. Um, there's there are many nice features also in MATLAB or Octave. Now this is the this is the Jupyter Lab to run Jupyter Notebooks. But if you'd like to run this code as well in MATLAB, you can do that. Um, it also includes ability to set breakpoints, to step through codes, to step into functions or out of functions. Okay, so if I come in here, I can see that um, x equals 10, for example, and then x plus hello, and then that might give me um, something I don't expect. Okay, so for example, I have x, 
okay, which is 10, 10 plus hello. Hello, these were um, the H-E-L-L-O. Those are the numbers here. We just converted those to integers, okay, but it may have been when I do 10 hello. All right, and the, the correct thing should have been uh, num to string. Okay, and instead of the plus, in order to concatenate these, you have to do an array. So there's just a little bit of getting you know getting used to, um, you know, if you've never run MATLAB before, you're going to run into a lot of errors, and you just got to be prepared to uh, take the time to search online or to look at the error message and see if you can de determine what is happening there. And the same thing for Octave as well. It has a nice GUI IDE, Integrated Development Environment, uh, that's very similar to MATLAB as well. So you can use either one. You can see the workspace here. You can see the command history and then the command window. And you can do things like start new scripts um, and step through code just like you would in MATLAB.